Hello, everyone. I am thrilled to be here with you today at the Nordic VR Forum 2020. Today, I will be speaking about something that is very close to my heart and that I've actually been working with for the last 20 years, and that is culture and leadership. And I will be talking about that in the context of the new world of work. So I thought I'm going to start out with taking a 10,000 foot perspective of what's going on in the work world and how it is affecting people and leadership and organizations. And then I will give you three powerful business strategies that will help you not only handle the changes, but also to thrive in the new world of work. So let's start out with having a look at the four transformational forces that have changed the way we work. Globalization, digitization, demographic changes, and COVID-19. And we could say that COVID-19 actually has uh, put uh, the other ones, at least digitization, on speed uh, lately. And with this new wor world of work, uh, some new skills are required. And World Economic Forum has actually defined what 10 skills that are critical in the new world of work with complex problem solving, critical thinking and creativity on top, but also things like people leadership uh, and emotional intelligence uh, stated as very, very important in order to succeed in the new world of work. And we're also seeing how organizations need to up their games and change their ways uh, in order to stay competitive in this new landscape. So companies around the world are trying to organize and work in ways that are more agile, fast, flexible, creative, diverse, uh, remote and hybrid, which a lot of organizations are finding themselves in right now. Uh, and also uh, organizations are realizing they need to become more human. And I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on that in a little while. But first, let's have a look and see of how changing times also had changed the, the roles and the skills of uh, the leaders. So in the good old days, or <laughs> I don't know if they were good, um, let's say 30, 40 years ago, the leaders were typically the boss, uh, giving orders, commanding and controlling people. And that obviously won't work in the new world of work, even though I do know there are some leaders who still try to, to do that. And uh, needless to say, they're not very effective. But this is kind of described as, as industrial age leadership style. Uh, but the last 10 to 15 years, we have seen a shift that leaders understand that their job is to, to lead change, build trust, collaborate and engage. Um, and now we are actually seeing that leaders need to up their games even more and learn how to lead in uncertainty, handle complexity, inspire and empower their people, and also how they can lead remotely. And just to, to give you an example of how the, the work world not necessarily have quite embraced these new ways of leading yet, or not quite embraced the human aspect of their business. Um, Forbes Inside Office did a research where they asked the 2000 biggest companies in the world um, how successful they were with a company uh, with a digital transformation. So the results of that research was uh, that 20% of those companies said that they had been successful. And 80% said they had not been successful. But of those 80%, actually 50% told that they this had been an epic failure. And on the questions of why they think they failed, um, a lot of companies, or most of them, they blame technology, infrastructure, inter internal processes, and project management. But uh, research showed that the reason why they actually failed was that they hadn't been able to change human behaviors. So they were implementing a lot of technologies, but they were not uh, inspiring, helping, making sure that people actually embrace this new technology. So it was not the lack of technology, but it was lack of using that that made them feel that they had failed with their digitalization. Digital is 10% tech and 90% human, but organizations talk about digital as if it's 90% tech and 10% human, Lucia Adams from the time said. And usually when I show this, people nod, and I can't really see you nodding right now, but I, I think you might, because I think this is something everyone recognizes, and there is a new awakening around that now, because obviously it hasn't quite worked as, as organizations plan, and then they have to look at what is the reason and uh, learning to pay more attention to the human side is a new insight many organizations now are embracing.
So with that, I would like now to share those three powerful business strategies with you that not only will help you uh, handle changes, but also thrive in the new world of work. And that is humane leadership, conscious cultures, and high performing team cultures. So let's uh, dive into humane leadership. So many leaders have thought that being a leader, then you have to kind of play a role. You have to have it all figured out. You have to be the boss. You have to kind of be decisive and, and, and play this managerial role. But the fact is that that way of leading is not uh, very effective anymore, if it ever was. So on a research, uh, both from World Economic Forum, Accenture and McKinsey, they have been defining what kind of attributes are most effective in the new world of work. And as you will see, that is not necessarily the ones, the kind of attributes that has been taught in business schools or maybe not either uh, you have seen uh, with leaders in the past. And that is to be self-aware, authentic, flexible, caring, curious, honest, vulnerable and brave. In other words, it is about being human. So leaders who embrace their humanness are able to build more trusting organizations and uh, create results, not because they are there to commanding, commanding, controlling them, but because they are letting people thrive in this new world of work. And Gallup has studied um, all these variables that influence culture, productivity and well-being, uh, especially in this situation now when people are moving towards hybrid and, and uh, remote work. And the findings, no matter what kind of angle they took on the research, they found that there was one role and one role only that stood out that really influenced how su successful people were in uh, transitioning to remote work. And that was the role of the leader. So leadership is more important than ever. And for leaders who understand that great responsibility they have to get the best out of their people and not control them are the ones who are most successful. So I spoke with a leader here the other day uh, and I showed him some of the data that I just showed with you. And then he said, Anakin, now give me something to, to give me an Excel sheet, uh, give me a, a program, uh, give me something I can touch and, and, and measure and, and uh, you know understand. But please, please, please don't tell me also that I have to be human. And uh, he was saying it jokingly, of course, uh, but there was a little piece of truth in there because there's a lot of leaders now that feel a bit uncomfortable with suddenly having to show up more vulnerable, show more, more up as themselves. But the thing is, when we don't know exactly what is happening, and there's been so many changes recently, and the changes will not stop. If you think you you pretend you're in control, there is no way you are in control and people won't trust that. Uh, it's much more authentic saying that, I don't know, I have no idea, but hey guys, let's figure out this together. So being more human is to be more open, honest and vulnerable. And it is a brave thing to do, but it's also the right and the most effective thing to do in the new world of work. Because the fact is that you will never have as much power as when you give your power away. When you stop, thinking that you have to be in control or that you, the only one, are, is responsible. Um, when you stop having that kind of mindset and start letting go of control, you will see people stepping up in a new way. They will take initiative, they will thrive, and they will excel in their jobs, not because you tell them to do, to do that, but because they really, really want to do that. So Finding your humanness and showing up as a more humane leader is a really, really powerful and effective thing to do in the new world of work. The second um, powerful business strategy in the new world of work is conscious culture. So there's a lot of been a lot of um, talk about culture lately, a kind of a buzzword, and and uh, people sometimes refer to it as football tables and cookies in a jar and Friday beer. And that is not culture. That is nice perks, but it's not culture. Culture is basically how you show up every day. It's what you do. It's how you do it, how you solve problems, how you uh, build products, how you collaborate, how you speak to each other, how you treat your customers. It's all those things that you do that is a, becomes your culture. And there's basically two ways to approach your culture. You could either do it consciously, which is about looking at where you're at, looking at where you need to go, looking at what kind of culture you need to have and build in order to get there. And then look at the culture you have and say, okay, what are the things we need to reinforce and do more of? What are the things we might adjust or do less of or maybe change uh, entirely? 
and then together be aware and deliberate about how you all show up every day that is to build conscious cultures the the other way of approaching culture that is to do it unconsciously which is basically doing nothing and just letting the culture happen by chance and strangely enough this is the approach most companies are taking so if you're serious about building culture, uh, one thing is to engage your team in that discussions of where you're at and where you need to go. But it also to start talking about what it is it that unifies you. What are the values that you share? Because the values that you share will form the way you think, your mindsets. And your mindsets will form your behaviors. And your behaviors will ultimately become your culture. So being aware of who you are, what you believe in, how you show up, that is um, how you can start shaping the kind of culture that you need. And it's also about how you communicate and collaborate on a day to day basis. So I do hear a lot of people talking now and saying that, you know, in this remote work it's really hard. The culture is struggling and, and we we're not able to communicate, collaborate and, and uh, this is not working well. The thing is, that has not to do with whether you're remote or not, uh, technology or not. It has to do with mindsets and, and what you do and what you prioritize. Because I've seen work, people working, you know, in the same office or in the same office uh, or in the same sofa, um, but working so individualistic that one plus one plus one, you know, just get three. It's just like uh, the result is just the sum of its parts. But other teams that have been working like um, all around the world, only seeing each other remotely or, or um, on, on video or however they are communicating, they are acting like real teams because it is about how often you communicate, the way you communicate and collaborate. It is not about you, where you physically are. So I think this is a mindset that a, a lot of people have that you can't really have a strong communication co uh, collaboration culture when you are remotely but I know um, that is not the case and I've seen it again and again and I think if you are deliberate about creating that kind of culture, um, you will make that be able to make that happen, even if people are not physically in the office. Peter Drucker, the management guru, said already uh, back in the 1960s that culture is strategy for breakfast. So we cannot plan, we can predict, we can decide what the future is going to look like, but we can create the kind of cultures that will handle whatever may come. So creating a conscious culture, that is the second powerful strategy for high performing teams in the new world of work, which leads us to the third one, which is the high performing team cultures model. Um, and I'm just very quickly going to take you through this one. But I want to say that working with this model, uh, working with these building blocks is really a powerful way to create the kind of cultures that are not only happy and thriving in their jobs, but are also performing uh, way, way better than those who are not paying attention to these elements. So it's, if you think about Maslow's hierarchies of needs, it's a little bit of the same, that at the bottom you have purpose and identity and trust, which are fundamental for teams to operate fu and function um, and, and, and co-create and create the kind of culture that is able to deliver um, great performance in spite of change. Then you have growth mindsets, which is all about the way we think and, and how we handle situations, especially now in changing times. It's important to pay attention to that. Do we look for problems? Do we look for solutions? Uh, where do we put our minds? Uh, are we afraid of change? Are we open for change, even though it's scary? So talking about the mindsets and then ultimately getting the team to a place of passion and joy. And I don't know about you, but I've been working in companies and I've seen lots of companies where I have that level of energy that you just come in there and just like feel it and you want to be part of it. And you're attracted to, to you know, work with them and work for them or do business with them. And it is about that, that uh, drive and that energy that unleashes when a team come together and they truly have a purpose. They have a strong sense of identity. They're trusting each other. They're focusing on the right things. And the passion and joy to a large extent becomes the consequence. But this doesn't happen in a vacuum. So it's also a lot about how the leaders lead and how the teams collaborate and communicate. But being deliberate, being um, aware of the power of uh, how this all plays together, that is, I think, one of the most powerful business strategy you possibly can have to have a team that will thrive in this new world of work. And the benefits of doing that are many. 
for team members, we, research shows that uh, um, people who work in joyful, passionate cultures, they feel 74% less stressed, 40% less burned out, and they are 29% happier with their lives. And when you look at the organizations, they can actually show for more creativity and innovation, up to 50% better performance, and 21% higher profitability. So there's really no reason not to invest uh, in um, people, invest in the culture, and spend time on creating these kind of organizations. So to round it up, I also want to say that this is kind of overwhelming. And I've been saying a lot of things in a very short time. Um, but that being said, the most important thing, I think, is to realize that even though we are living in changing times, even though things are challenging. This is also an opportunity. It's an opportunity to grow, to grow yourself, to grow your team, to even grow your business results just by not looking at this as a problem or an obstacle, but actually as an opportunity. And even though it's kind of scary and kind of hard, that's okay. It's okay to, to be scared. It's okay to be challenged. It's okay to not know how to do things because we're all in this together. No one, no one has been here before. Uh, not in this this situation that we are with COVID nineteen, and and not with uh, in the new world of work. We are co-creating this together. And I don't know about you, but I am a big fan of butterflies, and I love the butterfly effect, which basically talks about how small changes can have profound impacts. And as a leader, um, that is more uh, important than anything else to understand that what you do, how you show up, how you speak, how you talk, how you treat people, it doesn't only influence that one person or that one situation. It has an impact way beyond what you can see because the shadow of the leader is long and the butterfly effect is real. So I just want to encourage you that even though this might sound overwhelming, there's a lot of things you can do, just start doing something, just a little thing, just a little shift to move towards uh, a way of working, a way of leading, a way of organizing, um, a way of communicating and collaborating that will uh, be more effective, more engaging, inspiring, and lead to much better results. And you will thrive in this new world of work. So with that, I will say thank you so much for your time. It has been a pleasure and uh, I want to wish you all the best of luck and also that you will have a fabulous rest of the day. Thank you and bye-bye.